Let's talk about agents, because if you're going to make the diagnosis a PDN, most doctors I know would like to do something about it. Which agents have been shown to be the most effective in medication management of PDN, and which are preferred as the first-line treatments? Well, um, Peter, when you say which agents have been most effective, um, I think I have to clarify that um, in the sense that it depends what your, what your guidelines are for determining what's the most effective and least effective. So I'm going to answer in a slightly different way and hopefully that'll be acceptable to you. Um, of course it is. Okay. You're a doctor. Um, the agents which have received FDA approval for the treatment of painful diabetic neuropathy include um, an antidepressant that's also used to control chronic pain known as duloxetine, um, as well as pregabalin, uh, which is a um, agent that, that is uh, considered a modulator of calcium channels. Um, in the central nervous system, as well as a medication that combines mechanisms of action, both an opioid and a non-opioid mechanism in one drug to, called tependidol. Um, and so um, two, out of, uh, and, and two out of those three are considered controlled substances. So that's of interest um, when thinking about how you're going to prescribe. There are, however, guidelines that have included as important important agents to consider for painful diabetic neuropathy, you know, controlling the symptoms, that include the tricyclic antidepressants, such as amitriptyline, nortriptyline, disipramine, imipramine, the choice of a tricyclic, and these are older medicines that are not likely to ever receive FDA approval because they're, they've been off patent and generic for a long period of time, and there isn't the support to go through the studies that would lead to FDA approval, although in terms of which are most likely to, re to reduce pain, the tricyclics of all the medicines I've stated so far are the most likely, but they're also dirty when it comes to side effects. Um, and the choice, you would, you, would, you would avoid, for example, amitriptyline if you were thinking about a tricyclic in a patient uh, with painful diabetic neuropathy if they had heart disease and if they were over 50 or 60 years old because of the potential cardiovascular complications, among others. Uh, we also have topical therapies that are considered appropriate for, con for treatment of, of, of diabetic neuropathy that's painful, including topical lidocaine. Um, we've had good success in using the topical lidocaine patch, as well as the 8% capsaicin patch, um, which, um, again, these topical agents can be very, very effective because they don't have any systemic um, consequences. In general, opioid analgesics, especially the long-acting of, there are several studies in which extended release oxycodone, for example, um, extended release tepenadol, which I mentioned earlier, have been shown to be quite effective compared to placebo um, in the treatment of painful diabetic neuropathy. Um, there are some exper experimental studies done, being done with botulinum toxin in the management of, 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 of uh, di painful diabetic neuropathy, and the list can go on and on. There are other anticonvulsants, carbamazepine, um, and so on. So the, I think the take-home message, since we're talking about treatment, uh, is that there are guidelines to look at, but um, just based upon what I've said already, um, it should really be you know, considered that there, there's no shortage of options for a person who has painful diabetic neuropathy.